Hey everybody, so I'm Michael and I'm going to talk about Johnny Tremaine. So this is a famous historical novel. It takes place in the 1770s uh, during the start of the American Revolutionary War. It's one of those novels that they force kids to read in uh, middle school all the time. I never read it, but it's actually really fascinating. I'd rather learn about the Revolutionary War from this novel than from a stuffy old history book. So uh, the storyline is about this boy named Johnny who is working in a silversmith shop and uh, he's the only one in the silversmith shop who has any talent so it's guaranteed that he's going to marry into the family and inherit the business. Uh, the girl he's going to marry is Isilla, uh, short for Priscilla, and I thought she was the most interesting female character of the book. I really like seeing her relationship with Johnny develop as the story went on. Um, she's only 14 at the start of the book, and so is Johnny. They don't really like each other all that much, but uh, as time goes on, he starts to care for her and realizes she's a really great person. And there's also a funny scene where she gets really flirty with Johnny's best friend, and he gets super, super jealous. It's like, how can you talk to her? You, you can't do that. You're supposed to be my friend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she, she says later, it's like, well, I can't marry your friend. His last name, it, it doesn't fit with mine, but Scylla Tremaine, you know, if I had your last name, Johnny, that would work. And he's like, yeah, it would. He sort of means that as a joke, but he, he says it for real. And that's, that's sort of like the, the romance between them. It, they don't kiss or anything, but definitely their relationship is one of the more interesting parts of the book. I also like seeing what happens to her family as time goes on. And she has a younger sister named Izana, who's a wild child. Izana gets sick, and so Johnny tries to cheer her up by telling his story. See, he's actually an orphan. It turns out he's secretly related to uh, the rich family called the Lights. Um, his mother, on her deathbed, uh, she gave him a cup, which has the family crest on it, and it proves she's related to them, but she, uh, made Johnny promise to never show it to them, uh, unless there's, like, some dire circumstances. So, um, one day, the silver store, uh, gets a really expensive order from John Hancock, and, um, there's another boy named Dove, who's kind of stupid and mean and jealous and fat, and he's a really terrible person, but Johnny's also kind of a terrible person, too. Johnny is just unnecessarily mean to everybody, and he thinks he's the best person ever, and he'll just insult people for no reason and has no patience for anything. He's a lot like a YouTube reviewer in, in that regard. Well, uh, Dove is even worse than Johnny is at the start of the book. I like how Johnny, you know, his, his best friend calms him down and uh, Johnny learns to become a better person as time goes on. That was also something that's interesting. His best friend is Rab. He works for a newspaper place. And um, I I'm getting ahead of myself. So Dove sabotages uh, Johnny, first by uh, not getting any charcoal, then he gets the wrong kind of charcoal, then he gets Johnny a broken crucible. So when Johnny's working on this really important silversmith job, the crucible breaks and it pours all over Johnny's hand. And so his, uh, his thumb is kind of stuck to the inside of his hand by the molten silver. It's really painful. It's actually kind of painful to read. And now Johnny's crippled. He can't use his right hand for anything. Like, like this motion I'm doing here, Johnny can't do that. His hand cannot do something like that. So um, Johnny is sort of basically kicked out of the house, and Dove is really mean to him. Dove makes fun of him. He's like, ha ha ha, you can't tell me what to do anymore, and that's, that's what made me really hate Dove. Dove is making fun of Johnny for being crippled after crippling Johnny. It's terrible. So Johnny tries to find a job, and nobody's really willing to hire him, um, except his friend Rab, his best friend, who works at this newspaper place. And he, uh, Johnny eventually takes a job with them as a newspaper delivery boy, uh, simply because they've got a wild horse and nobody wants to ride this horse. That's why they're giving him the job. It's basically nobody else will take it. The horse gets scared by random trash on the street. It will throw the rider off and run away for uh, about a half hour. But before then, um, Johnny goes to the lights, you know, the rich people that he's related to, and he, he, he tries to convince them, guess what, I'm your long-lost relative. And Merchant Light goes, mm, no, this is a trick, you're trying to steal my money. And Johnny's like, no, 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 I really am related to you, and he gives the cup to prove it. And Merchant Light uh, tries to have Johnny arrested, because he doesn't want people to know that he's related to this poor person. So he tries to have Johnny arrested, uh, Rab gets a lawyer, and uh, Scylla testifies on Johnny's behalf. So that's, uh, that, that was actually really good. Um, uh, the Lights also have a, a, a daughter named um, uh, Lavinia, same, same name as Johnny's mother. She's supposed to be the most beautiful woman in all of Boston, and everybody's in love with her, and including Johnny. He kind of has a crush on her, even though I think she's at least twice his age. I'm not sure. The book never goes into her age. But still, it is kind of weird. Uh, and, and here's the weird part. So Lavinia 
actually uh, adopts uh, Isana. And adopt is not the right word. She basically buys Isana, you know, the cute little girl. She's like, oh, I'll just parade her around like a puppy. That's sort of what she does. She like dresses her up in fine clothes and parades her around. It's like, look, I've got a cute little four-year-old. Ha 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 ha. It was so weird that she just bought a daughter from a family and it's not adoption it's just like just buys the daughter and she also buys uh Scylla um as a servant she gives her free room and board so at least Scylla's getting paid um and, and the book goes into revolutionary war stuff too so uh the sons of liberty that's the group of the famous uh patriotic americans who uh, stirred up rebellion against the british crown so uh, they meet at the newspaper offices and they plan the uh boston tea party after the unpopular tea tax is passed and so uh, uh, what happens is a bunch of boys around Johnny's age, they disguise themselves as Indians, they break into the harbor, they break onto the ships, and they dump a bunch of tea overboard, and it's a really exciting scene. Um, then after that, Boston becomes an occupied city, and at first um, it's a really nice occupation. The British people are nice, they give Johnny jobs uh, as a messenger boy, but over time they become more and more nasty to uh, the people. Like one person named Pumpkin... Uh, he tries to escape from town because he just wants to become a farmer. So the British hunt him down and kill him right in front of Johnny. And that's, that, that wasn't very nice. And um, Dove uh, gets a job working for uh, uh, the British people. He gets a job as a stable boy. Uh, and Johnny becomes friends with him, not because he likes Dove. Dove is still a really terrible person. And now he's getting drunk a lot, which is even worse. Um, I guess the drinking age was 18 back then because Dove is clearly 18 years old. So... Um, so, so, uh, thanks to the fact that, uh, you know, Johnny's kind of working with the spies, the, these American spies, it's really useful for him to, uh, be friends with the British stable boy. And so he's able to, uh, learn about the Battle of Lexington and, uh, Concord, um, the, the day before, learns it well in advance, and he spreads the information to the American spies network so they can get the information to all the Americans in the country and, uh, fight in the battle. Because the battle started off as a surprise raid. So, um, you know, it, it evolved into a battle because Johnny finds out about it. Um, so more about the Sons of Liberty. This is something interesting I found about this book. Uh, uh, this book does not try to make the American founding fathers look like good people. The, you know, there's a big inspirational speech given by James Otis, which is about, um, you know, we're fighting so a man can stand up. Uh, we're fighting because we're going to be this bright sun of freedom rising in the West, which lights up the entire world. And James Otis is drunk the entire time. He gives this great inspirational speech. He's just drunk and crazy the whole time. It's so weird because under any other circumstance, it would be a great motivational speech, but he's drunk. And the book does that with all the founding fathers. Like John Hancock comes across as this rich guy who's trying to buy popularity. And then Sam Adams, he comes across as kind of bloodthirsty. He really wants to fight. And his hand starts shaking badly whenever he talks. I think Paul Revere is the only founding father who comes across looking actually nice. He, he looks like an actual good person, but all the others come across as bad. I thought that was really interesting because usually, you know, the founding fathers is what they're called. They're the people that helped found this country and they're usually portrayed as these great, wonderful, heroic people. But this book tries to go for a more realistic portrayal of them. Um, you know, war is dirty and uh, real life is not clean. And so I really uh, liked how this book tries to go for a realistic, not sanitized uh, portrayal of the American founding fathers. So, um... Let's see, uh, it, it, we're basically at the end of the book here. So uh, Lavinia decides she's going to go back to uh, England because she doesn't want to be here during the war. And she takes Isana with her. And it's a really terrible scene where, uh, you know, Lavinia's like, you want to go with me, right? You love me more than your sister, right? You want to live as a rich lady, right? And is really cruel and mean and you know she also tries to apologize to johnny because she realizes johnny's related to them she's like you know my my father's just this old person i'm really sorry for what he did johnny's not buying it because you know her father tried to arrest him her father's a really terrible person and she promises that once the war's over uh maybe they'll leave property to him you know when grandpa's dead and johnny johnny doesn't buy it but Scylla stays um 
anyway, that that's sort of a, a that was chapter number eleven of twelve. Chapter twelve, Johnny goes out to um, he basically disguises himself as a British soldier so he can go out to the the battle site. And Rab was one of the people that was wounded, and Rab sends Johnny away to get Grandsire. But this ends up being a trick just to get Johnny out of the way, so Johnny isn't there when he dies. Rab didn't want his best friend to see him die, and that was actually kind of touching. And um, uh, Johnny comes back, and Doctor Warren. Um, looks at Johnny's hand and he says, you know what, Johnny, I might be able to repair your hand. I might be able to cut the star scar tissue to fix your thumb. His hand's not going to be perfect, but he still will be able to get more limited movement. He'll be able to pick up a gun, basically use Rab's musket and fight. And Johnny wants that. He wants to stand up for what's right and, and freedom and, and such. I thought that was uh, interesting, too, um, that this book has these themes about, you know, patriotism and freedom. This book was actually written during World War II, so um, the target audience would have been boys about 14 to 16, about the same age as Johnny, and uh, they would have known that they're going to war in a few years just like Johnny. So that was really interesting. You could do historical criticism on this book just based on the time period it was written and the time period it takes place in, so... That's interesting. Because the book is like 75 years old, it's a little old-fashioned uh, in terms of how the characters relate to each other. The male characters uh, uh, relate to each other in a strange way that we wouldn't see in a book today. Same with uh, how the male and female characters relate to each other. And it's also the fact that, you know, most of our characters are teenagers too, so um, that's different. But overall, I, I thought it was a good book. It's, it's definitely got some themes um, about freedom and fighting and war and such like that. And I really like the personal drama with um, Johnny and Scylla and uh, the lights. I kind of wish it had a different resolution, but it was, it was still very interesting nonetheless. And I could definitely see people... <laughs> People um, would rather read this book and learn about the Revolutionary War that way than, uh, you know, learn about the war through a, a history book. Because this, this was more interesting, in my opinion. I can see why it's considered a classic. Um, I would give Johnny Tremaine uh, an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Let's go with a 9 out of 10. For freedom. For freedom.